اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبحان کا لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العلیم الحکیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی گون ٹو دا 14th لیکچر اف اپریٹنگ سسٹم ان دس لیکچر ویل ڈسکس اباؤٹ تھریڈز سو واٹ از بیسیکلی تھریڈ تھریڈز اور لائٹ ویٹ پروسیسز ود ان اے پروسیس اب as we have discussed so far uh, a lot about uh, process that uh, what process is how it is created how it is managed how it is scheduled and how it is executed how it ter- is terminated and how a process th- creates another processes so now what we are going to do is that uh, a process itself consists of some uh, uh, dependent but uh, dependent but loosely dependent uh, sub processes and they are called uh, threads so a thread is an atomic activity within a process within a process uh, there could be multiple activities uh, as can we uh, see in the web browsers and similarly a server computer uh, can have multiple threads uh, to deal with the multiple incoming requests from the uh, clients Uh, all threads of a process share a uh, data section code section and other operating system resources but each one has its own id register set uh, program counter and a stack and the logic behind uh, uh, the lightweight processes or thread is that they basically share uh, uh, the address space of the process and uh, they have their own register set and the context switch is uh, very quick because uh, uh they share the address space of the process so a process usually has multiple sub sub tasks to be done in parallel right so there could be multiple sub tasks to be done in parallel and particularly the word parallel uh is the motivation behind multi threading so if they are done sequentially then not only cpu time will be wasted but also the process will not do its functionality the way they should be done the responsiveness of a system is one of the uh, two um, uh, important reasons behind the evolution of operating system that uh, we discussed in the first chapter so to make a process responsive what we need to do is to do multiple jobs in parallel and if practically they are not carried out in, in parallel so at least we should have a mechanism in which the pseudo parallelism should be enforced so for example in ms word as an example consider ms word is in as a process so one thread is handling the keystrokes so there will be a thread that will uh, handle the keystrokes from the keyboard and the other uh, one is checking spelling in the background there will be another thread that will check the spellings of the typed words in the background and the other one is for auto save and there will be another thread that will periodically save the data the other one is for display of uh, and display and locating quick access toolbar and for example another thread will be there that will uh, locate and display the quick access toolbar so you can uh, see here that although we have an original pro- uh, process that is just a uh, ms word but that process actually uh, has a lot of threads a lot of uh, controls of executions that are uh, almost uh, independent of each other or atomic in in the sense that should be carried out atomically like uh, uh, dealing with the uh, input from the keystrokes and similarly uh, uh, checking the spelling in the background of the words dictionary and similarly auto save option that periodically uh, saves the content of the data a uh, content of the file and then uh, the, the the locating of uh, the quick access toolbar so all these things are basically threads of the single process so if we have uh, a single processor system it means that if we have a, just a single cpu then in that case uh, we can keep it busy with a single thread for example we have a sing we uh, a process and this process consists of a single thread of execution then this single thread of execution can keeps a cpu busy 
and this way but what about multi processor architecture and which we have multiple processes multiple uh, uh, cpus multiple processors are there and uh, if we have a single process and for example and uh, time sharing system uh, it's the time slice for this process and if it has only one thread of execution then it just can keep a single processor busy but other processes uh, other processor will be wasted so for that purpose multi threading is particularly useful for multi core architectures where each thread is running on one core or cpu if it is a single cpu then the switching back and forth of the threads is much quicker than the processes because in the context switch of the threads address space is not changed while in that of processes address space changes thus it causes pseudo parallelism and uh, as i uh, earlier said that if there is a single processor and uh, within a process we have multiple threads for example we have multiple threads then these threads basically switch back and forth so quickly uh, they uh, come execute and then return back so this switching back and forth is so quick uh, that it appears to us that all these three threads are running simultaneously although practically uh and reality the uh, only a single thread is running on the cpu at a time but it just uh, uh, give us an illusion that perhaps all of them are running simultaneously and this uh, uh, this philosophy is known as uh, pseudo parallelism so parallelism is not actually enforced the real it is not the real parallelism but the pseudo parallelism that it appears to us that more than two process threads are concurrently running and it is much faster than as compared to the uh, the processes because in threads we do not uh, change the address space but in case of processes we have multiple address spaces and context which takes a significant amount of time for example when a url is entered for example when a url is entered in a uh, in a browser then multiple tasks are performed by the browser fetch html code for example this is the one of the tasks establish links with the database so uh, to deliver database display graphics and various location of the page structure format structure format is set for example table images etc content is, is adjusted on the page that what should be displayed at what position so all these are basically threads of the browser similarly if we have a server consider we have a server right so multiple requests are coming to the server and they are asking for different pages so for example we have a, a here a database of web pages this is the database of web pages and multiple cli clients request uh, sends request to uh, this server and asking it to give it some uh, pages so for example uh, there are two requests or for example three requests are coming to server and they are asking for different pages for example this is asking for page 1 this is asking for page 2 and this is asking for page 3 so if uh, the server is a single uh, mm, uh, a single threaded system then it will go for the first it will search for that particular web page and then it will bring that web page and uh, then it will send to the particular client and again it will then follow for two it will search for that particular page and after searching that page it will come back and will respond to three similarly the three which will have done significant wait so far it will go for that search for the particular web page and that is three so it will come back and return that particular web page to the particular client so in this way this was a single thread system but you can see it is inefficient in multiple ways first uh, it depends on the ta uh, uh, on the time a uh, uh, time of search and fetch of a particular page you can see that page number 3 or a client number 3 would have requested for a lot of time because it might have sent a request and it is now waiting for the other threads to complete in a linear fashion but if we have multiple uh, a multi threading system then the first request 
will be uh, on the first will be put on first uh, will put on first thread the second request will be uh, assigned to the second thread and the third request will be assigned to the third thread so three th uh, three threads uh, upon three different processors it will may run for on one processor it may run on another processor and it may run on another processor so three threads are being run concurrently on three different processors by three by a single process even though we have a single process that is server process but server process has itself a lot of threads and it creates thread dynamically uh, upon the request of a client as for example this uh, request terminates uh, so the thread corresponding uh, the corresponding thread has been removed and if another request is made uh, then uh, another thread is created by the server application and uh, uh, that request is uh, assigned to that particular thread so if one thread does it, uh, does all of the uh, all of them uh, for example in the in the previous example you can see that if uh, one thread is responsible to do all these things the page will uh, gradually display from the top and gradually and slowly move down and will be able to interact while whole of the page is loaded that means that uh, if this uh, if the above all things uh, that is fetching HTML link establishing like with database displaying graphics contents adjustment formatting all these things if uh, they are uh, performed by a single thread system then the page will display from top gradually it will uh, show the uh, top menu and then it will say the header bar that will uh, then it will say uh, it will display another uh, frame that will, it will uh, display another frame and gradually it will come from top to bottom so this will not only uh, make the user uh, uh, irritating but uh, uh, it will also take significant time and the user will not be able to interact with the web page uh, until it uh, uh, the all the web, all web pages loaded but if we had multiple threads then one thread is controlling one part another thread is controlling another part and another thread is controlling another part and user will be able to do work on a thread even though other threads haven't yet completed for example if uh, uh, the, the proper page has not yet been displayed but if a user wanna search within a text uh, then he can search because the thread that was responsible to fetch the search box and the corresponding uh, uh, query system with the database and a model system with the database has been uh, fetched and uh, now user is able to search within the web page even though all the web page has not yet been loaded now once we use threads we basically enhance responsiveness so degree of interaction is increased we can share resources because we, uh, we can uh, share address space similarly buses similar to cpu it is economical in the sense that uh, uh, we can switch back and forth on a single processor and uh, uh, we need not have uh, other peripherals to be uh, shared and best utilize the multiprocessor architecture so this is that is how uh, threads are uh, used threads are of two uh, two kind some are called user threads while other are called kernel threads so the user threads are those which are created by uh, user and the user space Thread libraries are provided to create and manage thread, threads and user space. They are easy to create and manage. They are executed through kernel thread. Right? So user threads are basically executed and managed by the kernel thread. But if there are multiple user threads and only one thread, kernel thread, then a block call from a user thread may stop all other threads to uh, stop. It means that uh, even though we could have multiple user threads because their creation is too easy but if in our system uh, the, uh, the corresponding handler has just a single thread a single thread system then a, the, then it will be uh, prob, uh, problematic because if a single thread uh, call blacks calls block statement uh, uh, yeah or executes block statement then it will block whole the system and will not proceed 
On the other hand, uh, kernel threads are created in managed and operating system or in kernel address space. They are created by the kernel. The recreation and management is difficult. However, however, they are faster than the user threads because they are much uh, they are running on the kernel space, so they are much uh, faster in the uh, as compared to the user thread. Actually. Uh, kernel threads are responsible to manage the user threads right so in the system we normally have multiple threads and 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 uh, different number of processes for example I am here in my system and I am searching for uh, number of processes that how many processes are running cur currently running on my uh, system so uh, I am going here And uh, first, I'm writing get process. Uh, get sorry, this is uh, wrong. Get property, no. Get process. Get process. Get score process. Uh, dash process. Once again, process. And then dot count. So currently I have 92 threads running in my system. Now I am checking how many threads I have running in my system. Get a uh, process and then I have line and select object object and followed by expand property. Right? Expand property and threads. Space uh, threads then close the brackets and dot count that how many threads are currently running in my system so you can see here that although i have uh, although i have 92 processes in my system but total threads are 1303 so you can see that uh, for a single process there could be multiple threads this is how you can find in your system that uh, how uh, um, basically threads uh, can be counted on your system just go to your uh, taskbar and search for powershell and in powershell write these command get uh, get process dot count get process dot count and get process and then vertical bar select object expanded property and followed by threads and then bracket and then count then you will find that you will have different number of threads and threads will be more than processes The association of user threads with kernel threads is defined by multi-threading models because they because every user thread needs a kernel thread to execute them. As I said that for every user thread the management is uh, carried out by a kernel thread. So uh, there must be a mapping function that user threads will be mapped to the kernel threads and these models are called multi-threading models. So we have multiple models, uh, three models are there. Uh, basically many to one model one to one model and many to many model but there is no uh, sorry uh, one to many model so first let's see many to one model many user threads are mapped with the one kernel thread so multiple multiple user threads are basically governed by a single kernel thread a single kernel thread new threads uh, new thread creation are easy because they are created in user address space but one disadvantage is that if a user thread executes system block call then all threads will stop because only one thread manages them which has been blocked and that thread was kernel thread do you understand that is you can see that basically multiple user threads multiple user threads are being managed by a single kernel thread and if one of the user threads calls a system block then that kernel thread will block and if that if the single kernel thread blocks then all other threads of the process will will not work because the kernel thread has been stopped and it was the responsibility of the kernel thread to manage all the all these threads all these user threads 
but now because it has been blocked so it will not proceed another is one to one model uh, just like its name uh, that uh, for every user thread there is a corresponding kernel thread for every user thread there is corresponding kernel thread but as the user threads are dynamic and can be created by in any number you can see that in programming language like c sharp java python we can easily create new threads and user space for that corresponding thread there must be uh, the operating system must create uh, a kernel thread in order to handle that so corresponding kernel threads are dynamically created by the kernel corresponding uh, kernel thread are being uh, created by the kernel so as and as the creation of the kernel thread is difficult and time consuming it is not that much easy to create a kernel thread so uh, this uh, model this multi model is inefficient however once k threads or kernel threads are created for the user thread then it, they, they are uh, then we, uh, they can be easily managed quickly And the final model is many to many model. Many user threads are mapped with multiple kernel threads. So multiple user threads are mapped with multiple, but, but these kernel threads are basically less than the user threads. It means that kernel thread is in charge of some fixed number of user threads, not like one, one, one to one. It's not like one to one relationship. For example, for every 10 user threads, for every 10 user threads, three kernel threads are created. So initially, uh, if there are no kernel thread at all, for example, and 10 user threads have been created, then corresponding to that, to match these 10 threads, another kernel thread will be created. So when 10 user, uh, so, so when 10 user threads are created, then immediately three kernel threads are created. What about one to many model? Just like uh, other models now, uh, what about one to many model? Will it be uh, will it be exist? No. Why? Because one to many model doesn't exist. It is because it is unrealistic and doesn't make sense. Because what the user threads are being run by kernel thread. And if we are saying that for to, in order to run one user th thread, we need multiple kernel threads. It doesn't make any sense. As a user thread is managed and run by kernel threads, so why more than one kernel thread should be given to, sing, uh, to, uh, to manage a single thread? Maybe we have, uh, and for, for in order to, uh, uh, to contradict the, the, our, our hypothesis, I can say that, uh, uh, Maybe we have excess number of kernel threads. It is possible that we have multiple kernel threads and they are free. They are free over there. And uh, what we gonna do is that assigning one user thread to multiple kernel threads because they, all of them are free. Right? So no, this is not true. Kernel threads are limited and fixed in n maximum number. Their number is uh, fixed, and you cannot create an infinite number of kernel threads. Another reason that can contradict all hypotheses they may be uh, the creation of the kernel thread is so easy. It must uh, that that is uh, much easier. So for every user thread, I'm creating 10 kernel threads. No, kernel threads are takes significant time and resources to be created so due to these two reasons we cannot have one too many model first reason first reason is that the, uh, the uh, creation of kernel threads is uh, very uh, difficult and number two we cannot create dynamically the kernel threads in large number uh, here is the diagram in which you can better understand the relationship between them and the first diagram you can see many to one thread model that many user threads have been mapped to a single kernel thread and for example this thread executes a block call on this thread then this thread will stop working and once this thread is uh, stops working then all other threads can will not be able to execute and here is a one to one model that corresponding to every thread there is another kernel thread 
and finally we have many to many model in which multiple user threads you can see that uh, multiple user threads multiple user threads are being mapped to multiple kernel threads but the uh, these are kernel threads and these are user threads but it should be noted that user threads number of user threads in this model should be greater than or at the worst case equal to the kernel thread so this uh, property must be ensured in order to make this realistic user level uh, threads are created uh, are, cre are created by some standard libraries like POSIX in the next uh, class uh, uh, um, perhaps in the second next class uh, we will create threads in Python language so you will be able to understand that how easily we can create uh, uh, threads in a programming language you can also create threads in C sharp in Java and other languages and VB uh, so in the next lecture uh, and that will be on lab uh, in which we will discuss how can we create threads they are very easy very easily created by just running a single statement like create thread okay but on the other hand we can create kernel thread in linux programming language doesn't provide interface to directly create kernel threads as we can create the user thread user level threads so unlike user level threads we cannot create the kernel level thread that easily as a uh, as user level threads thank you so much for watching this and uh, inshallah in next lecture we'll discuss the issues that are related with threads and after that we will have two classes on uh, lab work in which we will implement threads uh, multi-threading models control semaphore etc thank you so much fee amanullah